Hi, good morning, everyone. Today, I think we have the perfect topic to talk about during this holiday season of overindulgence. We are talking about the Yamabushi, the mountain monks, and getting back to nature. So thank you so much for joining. This is Seeking Sustainability Live. I'm JJ Walsh, and today we have Tim Bunting in Yamagata. Thanks for joining, Tim. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. It's so fascinating and interesting to me, and it's something that I've actually come across a few times in the series. Uh, we talked to a filmmaker, Fritz Schumann, who made a film about, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, about the mountain monks. <laughs> and I, I saw your name is in the credits. I just yeah. rewatched it. And then oh, right. um, I love also, you know, coming across your Yamabushi tours and Yamagushi excursions um, when we did the talk with Derek about Yamagata right. tours yeah. for the Hidden yeah. Japan. So it's something that's kind of been on my radar for a while. And someone like me who lives in a small city in Japan, but is always thinking about yeah. how to live more sustainably. It's really appealing to me to try to have that philosophy to get back to nature. So yeah. What what was it, do you think, about your childhood or just coming to that region? What was it that really made you passionate about promoting the Yamabushi and mm. promoting the area to other people. The nature of New Zealand and the nature of Yamagata or Japan is quite uh, quite similar. And but I didn't uh, I didn't really know what a Yamabushi was when I first came. Like I had heard of them, but I didn't understand um, anything at all. Sure. Uh, so Yamabushi follow what's called Shugendo, uh, which is an ancient religion that. It combines Buddhism, Shintoism, uh, animism, and Taoism. It developed more than a thousand years ago. Uh, and we essentially, so nature is our teacher. And we go out into nature and we try to learn her secrets um, and try to use uh, what we learn in our daily lives and also to help um, other other people who may be struggling. Understand it from what I've seen uh, on your wonderful website and videos and other people yeah. is you really have to experience it for yourself to really appreciate yeah, that's it. That's right. So yeah, you can't you can't understand without actually doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Master Hoshino is he just turned seventy four, um, and he's our master, and he's. I'm not sure if you have a picture, but he's got a really awesome beard. Um, and he's been doing Yamabushi training for, oh, well, he, he was brought up in a Yamabushi household. So he's the master of Daishobo Pilgrim Lodge. And about 30 years ago, he started providing Yamabushi training to people because he, he found it really hard to describe what a Yamabushi was. And so he thought, okay, um, people are going to have to actually experience the training and he he set up the training um, he has a vast experience as a yamabushi and he's even done the 100 day fuyunomini ritual uh, which actually ends on uh new year's eve so in three days um so yeah he's 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 insane um he leads the training and uh he can like you can stay in the waterfall for like five minutes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, you, uh, where he introduces the philosophy. Uh, he yes, introduces yeah. himself as 13th generation Yamabushi. That's, that's correct. And yeah. so yeah. he so. describes it in one of the videos that you show about it's like being given the house keys from your family. Like you have to carry on the family traditions it's it's something that's part of yeah. your legacy yeah. right really interesting yeah. about the kind of people that come to do the training ah, right and yeah. i think that's very key in terms of appealing to people who might be interested um for people that come what kind of uh -huh. appeal do you think for modern people yeah yeah so, so for us, for us we don't regard, for Yamabushi training, we don't regard it as tourism. Um, so we we 
think it more of um, self-development. And so the people that come, they're not looking, well, some of them are, but they're not looking for like a typical tourist um, activity. They're looking to better themselves and to do that in a way that has been done for over a thousand years with the Yamabushi. And so we get people who it's their first time to Japan and they come straight to Tsuruoka, to Yamagata, uh, and which which is unheard of, right? Most people, when they visit Japan, they go straight to Tokyo and uh, do the Golden Route. Uh, but yeah, we get some people who just come straight to us. Uh, and so most, most of them, they're, oh, it's a bit hard to say because we get a big range of different people. Um, some some in their 60s, some even in their 20s, and they're just wanting to find a way to, um, I don't know, restore or get back to their former former selves or their original selves. Maybe they're, um, they're a bit stressed or they've just gone through something big or um, they just want a new start. Um, and yeah, they come in and train and join us on the mountains. He's described it in one of the videos as people come because in their modern lives, they are too busy and they have no yeah. space yeah. in their heart. So that, yeah. Yeah. that reconnection with nature allows them to yeah. reconnect in a way. Right? Yes. Master Hoshino describes it as like you in our modern lives or humans, we, we think too much in our heads. And his, uh, Master Hoshino's philosophy is that that's not the right way to go about life. The right way is to uh, f like feel first before you think and feel, um, go, go out into nature and feel. Uh, what nature is teaching you and then don't think too much about it um, uh, when you're out there okay and then so you when you're out in nature you um, sense uh, and you take what you you feel and then you re you reflect on <laughs> what you felt uh, so there's a, there's a bit of it's really it's quite uh, abstract so it's quite hard to describe but um, he, he makes a, a distinction between your heart, what your body feels, and what your brain tells you. In the video that Fritz did, he talks about the idea is to experience the tortures of hell, <laughs> to experience okay. Okay. Yep. the yep. hardships, right? Like the hardship yes. is, is yep. part of the experience. Can you explain that a little bit? Right. right. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not allowed to tell you too much. I'm not allowed to tell anyone to, in too much detail about what we do. We swear an oath. Um, but the training is based on the 10 realms of Buddhism. And one of those realms is the hell realm. And so we, it, during the training, um, uh, I think it should be okay for me to tell you this because you can, if you look it up, you can. You can find us on the internet. Um, but we do this ritual. It's called uh, Namban Ibushi. And they we get locked into in a, in a room, which um, they close off all the airflow. So they close off all the windows and everything. And they burn uh, like peppers and rice husk and all manner of things. And so the room just gets filled with smoke. And you're, yeah, you're, you're just meant to be there. Uh, and we as well while we're in there, so it's like it's quite atmospheric, um, and that's that symbolizes the realm of hell in Buddhism. That's uh, um, that's unique to the Deva Sansa. Wow. Yeah. That that does sound very <laughs> intense. That's one of ten. Yeah. <laughs> also, it's quite it's quite intense. Also, the idea of what you wear. Uh, you're wearing white clothes and yep. tabi. Can you describe the uniform, yep. the Yamabushi uniform a little bit? Yep. Sure. sure. So when we do Yamabushi training, the it's based on a, it's called a pilgrimage of rebirth. And so we, symbolically or metaphorically, we, we die. 
and our souls go on their own training in the mountains and then when we when we finish the training the souls we can reattach with your body uh, and so um we wear shiro shozoku which is literally white garments and we that's to symbolize that we are dead metaphorically speaking of course uh and so because uh, in japan that's what they they put on the the dead um and yeah that that's right uh and for for the tabi for the shoes that we wear that's uh traditionally it would have been waraji which are straw that you um tie you like a straw shoe uh which the senior yamabushi do actually wear um during the training um There's different types of yamabushi as well and so um if you've seen like ones where we have a blue and white checkered pattern that's for that's for official uh ceremonies for example there's a week long akinomeniri um which is like a yamabushi uh, um initiation ritual uh, and and in that one we have the blue and white checker um and we have uh on our head we have a black it's called a tokin um which uh that's that's buddhist as far as i can tell um but the uh cuz there are different types of yamabushi so on the dewasanzan there are the dewasanzan are rare and that there are shinto yamabushi um and that was because during the meiji restoration the dewasanzan switched to shintoism so they were buddhist up until 1868 and then they switched to shintoism uh and, and up, until up until then yamabushi were training on the dewasanzan as, Buddhist. as buddhist uh, uh but then, then because, because the mountain switched to shintoism um, um they tried to ban buddhism, buddhism in the major restoration and then uh the the townspeople like, like for them the, the yamabushi rituals were extremely important, important. And, so and so they petitioned the newly christian devasanzan shrine to reinstate yamabushi training okay, okay. and so, and so now uh, on the devasanzan we have buddhist, buddhist yamabushi and shinto yamabushi, and yamabushi. So, so after after the second world war the buddhists uh, reemerged okay uh, and then so we have two two types of yamabushi and they train alongside each other so there's a week long ritual that it's quite starts on, it's quite uh, complicated i was listening it's to i was watching yeah. your uh you great youtube video where you try to explain <laughs> the reason why there's a mesh of shintoism and buddhism at the same time yeah. along the trail so that's an excellent video yeah. if anybody wants that detail yeah. um but it seems like the yamabushi training all of the wonderful uh activities and products that you offer as as someone who might visit is all based on the yep. three mountains right so that's right can yeah. you yeah, the Deva Sansa. introduce yeah. the the three mountains and how they are distinct or meaningful in different ways sure sure yeah, yeah. so the Deva Sansa, there are three mountains um of Deva. Deva is the name of the former province um which there was a, up until the restoration as well um so Deva encompassed Yamagata prefecture and Akita prefecture um and now it's just Yamagata uh but so there's Mount Hagoro Mount Gassan and Mount Yudono and Mount Hagoro represents the world of the present uh and Mount Gassan the world of the past and Mount Yudono the future and Mount traditionally it, it, the makeup of the three dewasanza weren't these three mountains it used to be mount chokai mount gasan mount hayama and mount yudono um with mount yudono being so once you have once you have visited the first three then you were able to visit mount yudono where you are reborn okay uh so mount yudono has a there's a monument on there which i'm not allowed to tell you about um people have to come and see it for themselves but uh there's a monument there which represents where we are reborn uh and so when you so each uh, as i said so each mountain represents a different time and so it's believed that by going on each mountain you go through time 
it's like a uh, like a time travel or um, different cosmic times and uh, by by doing that your and training your soul on the mountains um, you're able to come out like reborn or refreshed and so yeah so um, Mount Haguro Mount Haguro is covered with a cedar forest um, and stone stairway that leads up uh, and so yeah Mount Haguro is is amazing it's got a five-story pagoda as well uh, which if the Deva Sun Sun hadn't switched to Shintoism wouldn't be there because they have you have you been to Mount Koya in Wakayama Prefecture? No, not yet. So Koya san But but I yeah. talked yeah. to so, a guide of the Kumano Trail, so she talked about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because if you've been to Koya san it's like the it's covered in like Buddhist monuments, like um, Buddhist statues and um, like it's like a giant graveyard actually. And that's what Mount Haguro was like until 150 years ago. They, uh, there was a Buddhist purge and they tried to rid the mountains of Buddhism. Um, the reason why I didn't go to Mount Koya is because Mount Koya is so secluded. And there are, there are three temples on Mount Haguro. There used to be 30, but all but three were destroyed. Um, and there was even one temple there that could ha hold up to 5,000 monks <laughs> that was destroyed. Um, and so, yeah, so the mountain has been used for centuries. Mount Hagod has been used for centuries. It even had its own. So there's the three mountains that you have a pilgrimage of rebirth on. So Mount Hagod used to have its own pilgrimage of rebirth um, up until the major restoration. So I'm, I'm showing the three uh, mountain pictures from your website right now. So basically yeah. Mount yeah. Gasan is the past, the souls, That's right. That's right. souls of the dead the highest of the sacred yeah. mountains uh, things yes. we must let go of is what yes. is what you should think about when you go to Gasan. Yeah. yeah and you you have an excellent video on your YouTube channel where you talk about the philosophy of Yamabushi and accepting yeah. yes yes right can you tell us a accepting. bit about accepting yeah. that's a key yeah. concept yeah. Right? Sure. that's right that's right so so, uh, so for Hagoro Shugendo, which is the, the, the brand or the, the school of Shugendo that we follow, there's a core philosophy or core teaching, which is called Uketamo. And Uketamo comes from, or the word means to accept or I accept. So it's Uketamawaru in Japanese. And this is, this is a, this is at the core of what we do. And so, when you're out training on the mountains, your master will say, uh, we will now do waterfall meditation or we will now, um, I don't know, climb Mount Hagoro or something, something like this. And during the training, you're not allowed to talk. There's no talking except for the word Uketamo. Okay, so the master will say, uh, we will climb Mount Hagoro and you say, I accept. And you have to say it with passion. And... So in, in that way, uh, Uketomo is, is uh, what would you say, um, in, in, enacted or, uh, um, but there's also a mental aspect, which is extremely important. Um, I think it's quite similar to in Zen, Zen Buddhism as well. Zen Buddhism is all about acceptance. And um, so the, the reason why Zen monks sit in lotus position is because you stop your hands from moving so you, you stop grabbing things and you stop your feet from moving so uh, it means that your body is in a state of ultimate acceptance so it's, it's able to accept uh, and then for us um, yeah so ketamo is like um, you accept things for what they are um, in any situation even tough situations so this acceptance and not not speaking um, is something yep. that even Japanese people who do the course struggle with. 
and I yes. saw being uh, abroad yes. and his video, and he was struggling with not being able to speak. He's he's a YouTuber, right? Yeah. And not being able to do That's social right. yeah. media, and to to yeah. really just accept that you you are powerless, and to be quiet. Yeah, yeah. And it's, the about, silence, it's, right? it's about it's about it's about yeah, giving giving yourself over, surrendering yourself over to nature, and then letting nature. Seek, seek in, seep in, like come into you. You, you must see that all the time. Uh, people who come from their modern lives and and try to do this, and the struggle yeah. that they have yeah. to um, to give up even speaking, so, right? Yeah. Yeah. So people, yeah, yeah. speaking. Uh, surprisingly, speaking isn't isn't the toughest thing for a lot of people. Even people who talk a lot. Um, yeah, there are other other aspects of the training that they don't particularly enjoy. Um, Tim is now talking about the conch shell and learning how to play the conch. Uh, you want to give us a quick introduction again? <laughs> Take two. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so for for the the conch, um, it's about that big. Uh, some some are big, some are small. Um, smaller ones are harder to play but uh, harder to get a good sound out of. But we use the conch when we when we enter the mountains to greet the gods, uh, and we use it during rituals or during chanting when we go to different gods on the mountain. And another more practical reason we use the conch is to ward off bears. Um, you know, sometimes so we... Uh, sometimes in the, during the training, we go to places where no one usually goes, and so the path is a bit overgrown, um, and so bears don't see humans along there that much, and so it can be a bit dangerous. So we have to, um, when we're when we're walking on the mountains, we we blow it, um, and so we we use the side of our mouth, we use this part of our mouth to blow it, so that we can walk and blow it at the same time, and yeah. And you have a great yeah. you have a great video where you you tell more detail about how to blow it and when you blow it and stuff. So yeah. please, if you're interested, please check out his uh, YouTube channel. Um, so we talked about Mount Gasan. Mount Gasan is the where the souls of yeah. the dead or the past, and where you should you should leave uh, things that you're holding on to from the past yeah. that you really should let go of. And yes. um, I think Master Hoshino was talking about um, when people are born in Japan, the Japan belief is that the mountains are mother and you're born, yeah. right? And then a lot of people, yeah. when they're about to die, they want to go back to the mountains is a traditional yeah. Japanese belief. Can you explain that yeah, a little bit? Yeah, I can explain that. Yeah. So there's a belief. So I'm... I'm pretty sure it would have been all over Japan, but it's definitely where I am in the Shonai region of Yamagata. And so it's called Kannabi Shinko. The, the, the concept for death in Japan like never actually existed in ancient Japan. So it was believed that when you pass away, you, you actually still lived in this world, but you're, you lived in the mountains. Um, and it's believed here there's a a uh, belief called Kannabi Shinko, in which when we pass away, our souls spend 33 years climbing, doing their own training. And they start off with, at the lower mountains, for example, Mount Hagoro, and then they slowly go up and up. And then for us, at least, the after 33 years, uh, sorry, they're guided by 13 Buddha. And after 33 years, they reach the top, the summit of Mount Gasan, and they turn into a Kami god to look over all the people. Uh, and so this is, this is, um, this might be strange for some people because uh, it's both Buddhist and Shinto, right? So they're protected by Buddhist gods and then they turn into a Kami, uh, a Shinto god. Um, and it's believed that if you, so the ancestor worship is huge in Japan as well. And so it's believed that the, Gods that are prayed to, or the ancestors that are prayed to, when um, become good gods, 
okay? And the ancestors that aren't prayed to or aren't worshipped become bad, or bringers of evil, basically. And they, they've been doing it like this for more than a thousand years here on the Dewasanza. And yeah, and we, we provide opportunities for people to join us. Talk about the opportunities a little bit. You have, it seems like two day courses or four day courses. Can you introduce those? Sure. So the, the what would you call it? Um, our master's training is a four day training. This is our flagship uh, program. And we take people, so first we take them to a Zen temple to orientate them with uh, Zen, uh, what would you call it? Zen approaches to, to life. Uh, and this gives people a background about of Japan, uh, Japan's spirituality. And then, then we spend three days in the mountains led by Master Hoshino. Uh, so comparison between Zen approaches to philosophy or life and then the Yamabushi way. And this, so all, all the trainings are designed to teach Uketamo. The, the mindset, uh, because this mindset is extremely useful for, for life. Um, it's quite, it's helped me quite a lot. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's the, the four day program we have. And then we have a two day, it's called the basic training, which is a shorter version, but it's still as full on. And during that training, we stay on Mount Hagoro. Um, and yeah, that trains, uh, it's just a sh shortened version without Master Hoshino, but it's still led by a certified Yamabushi. Um, yeah, and we also do, there's a guided hike, a Yamabushi guided hike, which uh, hasn't been put on the website, it will be on the website soon, uh, in which we, it's a one day experience and, and we take people through we explain the philosophy of the Yamabushi, but also have practical uh, elements as well, where we take them onto the mountains and, and run them through some some exercises. Uh, so we provide everything, everything that they need. Uh, so the white clothes, there's a shimet necklace, um, a hawkan, which is a thing that you wrap around your head, which looks like a bunny rabbit. Um, then, yeah, for Tubby, if people join the master's training, the four-day training, we give them, we actually give them the the white uh, split-toed shoes. Those shoes are, so they're, they're really good because you can actually feel the ground when you walk on it. Um, yeah, it's, I, I recommend using them if you're ever going hiking even. <laughs> they're really good. Is there, in like in winter, some of the videos that I saw people wearing actual winter boots, do you, do you change? Yeah. Uh, so traditionally, Yamabushi don't train outside in the winter. And so for us, we, we provide the Yamabushi guided hike in the winter. Uh, and so, and during that time, yeah, you need winter protection. So um, probably at that time, you would need boots as opposed to the tubby um, and also we have spats which are like little covers that you put over your shins um, and also sometimes we use snowshoes as well uh, if we're out on yeah because Mount Hagoro can get sometimes about a, a meter deep of snow so um, <clears throat> yeah winter winter we normally don't don't go outside winter's about training indoors yeah. yeah. So, so the, the shoji and yori of the Dewa Sanzan isn't actually vegetarian. Wow. Um, they use benito, benito-based uh, dashi uh, in the in the soup um, because the it's Shinto. The mountains are Shinto, and in Shintoism you're allowed to eat fish, so they're not actually vegetarian. But it's extremely easy to make it vegetarian because they just have to switch the dashi from um, fish to kombu, kelp. Uh, and so if you do come, 
tell us if you're vegetarian or vegan and we can it's it's very easy to make the switch um so the yeah the food is is all it's what yamabushi used to eat to survive while they were out training in the mountains and so it's it's developed over more than a thousand years of people uh out living out on the mountains so they they found out what they could eat um and they also developed ways of storing it so um like drying it in the sun pickling or um yeah salting um yeah i was yeah. i was surprised to see on the menu is seaweed right and uh, that's it. but you're in the mountains uh, yeah so even that's though right. you're in the mountains they're still using the katsu for the miso soup whereas i thought they were i thought maybe it would be mushrooms you know like mountain vegetables that's interesting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i think maybe it's just become modern <laughs> so derek, in the series we talked to derek and he interviewed a shojin yori chef at the temple so collecting mountain yeah, yeah, vegetables yeah. with him. So at that place would be, yeah, yeah. I assume, vegan shojin yori, but... Yeah. yeah, if it's a temple, if it's a temple, it will be, yeah. So the Buddhist temple yeah. is vegan, plant-based, but the Shinto temple or Shinto shrine yeah. Yeah. is not. Is that right? It's, 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 that's correct, yeah. Wow, I never really... Um, but I'm not sure, together. I'm not sure um, where, where Derek went, because if he went to Saikan, it's not a, a temple, it's a shrine, so it's Shinto. Um, and so they, they use, it's not, it's not actually vegan. So they use, um, yeah, the fish, bonito flakes. That's interesting. Uh, for the Yamabushi experience, we stay in Daishobo, which is the pilgrim lodge run by Master Hoshino. And yeah, we separate, uh, we separate into sexes if people are worried about that, but yeah, the Daishobo is it's a pilgrim lodge, so it's been uh, as must you said, Master Hoshino was the thirteenth generation. So Daishobo, oh, I can't remember exactly, but I know it's been around for at least one hundred and fifty years. Um, and so yeah, the pilgrim lodges there's there's a village of pilgrim lodges. Um, there were actually around three hundred and sixty of them, and now there are only there are less than thirty. And the reason, one big reason is because it has to be run by the same family. So when you pass it on, it has to be run, run through the same family. Um, so there's a family so, legacy uh, in yes, terms of yes. who can be the caretaker of the... That's right. The, wow, how interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we talked about uh, the places to stay and what you wear and what you eat. How accessible is it yeah. to women is it pretty open accessible to men and women both oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's, no, no, there's no there's no there's no, no difference between the sexes there used, there used to be and there used to be are um, women, until the major restoration there women were. allowed to do everything that men are allowed to do yes, yes. yeah yeah they are uh, uh one one difference is, is during the, the official shrine, shrine training so, so the men and the women are separated uh, so for the Shinto, for the official trainings, the the run run by the Derosan Shrine, the women and the men are separated. So they do they do separate trainings. Um, the rituals are different, um, but yeah. But besides that, women are able to join, 100%. Do you do you have any women yeah. at the master level, like Master Hoshino? Ah. Oh. I don't know. So Master Hoshino is a bit uh, for the so he's special. So for the for the Fuyu no Mineri, there's a hundred day training. So he's done that. Um, I think that's only open to men. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's only open to men. And the they they ha actually they have to be they have to live on Mount Hagoro. And so, and so it's it's, it's extremely there's only a, 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 a tiny pool of people that they can choose from. Um, so I don't I've never heard of a woman getting up that high in the ranks. Um, but there are women who yeah. become yamabushi, are there? There are. There are yes, yes. Um, so 
the Shinto version, they call them Miko. Um, and the, the Buddhist version, they're, they're just normal Yamabushi. What level of fitness do people, uh, should right. people have? Yeah. yeah. So, so you need to be able to climb a mountain. <laughs> That's about, yeah. It's and um, what would you say? Like a day of walking. You need to be able to, to walk for a whole day. It's about all. You don't need to be buff or anything. Because let's, just need to be able to let's walk. talk about Mount Haguro and the steps. Right. right. Okay. okay. So, so, yeah, yeah there's 2,446 yeah. steps up Mount Haguro. Uh, uh, it's not, uh, it's doable. You can walk them. So, Master Hoshino claims that he can go up them in 30 minutes. Uh, I, I think that's a bit, I think he's stretching a bit, but uh, uh, it takes probably, you want to give about an hour to an hour and a half to get up. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. It, it looks beautiful. It's not, it's not, it looks absolutely oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, there's, so there's most, actually... most people who are not Master Hoshino level might take about an hour, you say? <laughs> yeah, about that, yeah. So, the, the trees the trees on Mount Hagura actually, um, we've been working with the shrine and a group called the Monzen Machi Project to, we actually, what would you call them? Uh, what would you call it? So we, we, we examined them because some of them are dying. They're, they're rotting from the inside. And there were seven that we just, we had to fell. Um, because they were at danger of falling. And there was even in 2018, there was actually one one tree that fell and it it hit right on top of one of the shrines, the Masha shrines, and um, the shrine was completely destroyed. And so they had to rebuild the shrine, but the tree, we, we can't, it's a tree, so you can't rebuild it. And so uh, it's actually, it's quite a big, big problem that we're facing is how to sustainably um, keep the forest as it is. Um, and so we might have to actually cut a lot of the trees, a lot more of the trees down um, so that future generations can come and enjoy the place as well. So cutting the yeah. rotten trees, hopefully using the wood in a meaningful, nice way. Yes. And then uh, yeah. planting new trees. Um, but that, right. that is very significant for Mount Haguro because it represents the prison. And presently, we are facing so much climate change and problems with destruction of nature. So it's like Mount Haguro's trees are trying to send us a message about we need to take care of nature oh, better, yeah. maybe. Right? You could say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could definitely say that. Yeah. The Ewa have been... Uh, used for pilgrimages for, for over a thousand years. Uh, according to legend, more than 1400 years. Wow. And yeah. so just to reiterate, there are 2,446 stone steps to get to the top of That's Mount Haguro, right? That's right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's really impressive. So we talked about Mount Gasan was the past, Mount Haguro is the present. Mount Yudono is the future. Yeah. Can you tell us right. about yeah. the future mountain, Mount Yudono? Yeah. Uh, so Mount Yudono, there is a mount. Uh, th this is really confusing as well. So there is a mount mountain called Mount Yudono. But when we say Mount Yudono, we don't refer to the mountain. We refer to there's a sacred object at, at the shrine. That's what we refer to when we're, we're talking about Mount Yudono. Okay. So, yeah, it's it really confusing. Um, and I, I can't tell you too much about what's there. Um, you're not even allowed to take photos or film it. Um, and so you have to actually go and see it. Uh, but Mount, Mount Yudono is, is uh, yeah, it's got this sacred object there that represents where we are reborn. Um, yeah. So that... Where that where the the Tori gates are, uh, that place is called Seninzawa, which in English we call it the Swamp of the Immortals. <laughs> okay, um, because that's where the have you do you know Soku Shinbutsu? 
the living Buddha or Buddha mummies. Have you heard of, heard of them? No. <laughs> so um, that's where the, the there are there are these monks who they actually self mummified, um, and there were. I don't know how many, there must have been hundreds over all over Japan. But Monks from this shrine um, self-mummified. How? Uh, so that was, is that right? It's from before it was a, it was from before it was a shrine. It was a temple. Yeah, because they're part of the Shingon sect of Buddhism, where it's believed that enlightenment could be reached in this world. And so uh, monks, they would, they, they, tried to leave behind a physical remnant of themselves. So they um, they would uh, train out in the in the mountains around this area on Mount Yudono. Um, and then after, so more than a thousand days um, out on the mountains, they then when they decided that it was time to move on or um, move on, I suppose we would say, um, or to reach enlightenment, that's what their aim was themselves in a in a hole which was about two meters deep um, and they would ring a bell and chant um, and when the ch chanting or the the bell actually I think they were too weak to chant properly and so that's why they had the bell and when the bell stopped the um, other people the the followers or their disciples would know that the they had passed or they had reached enlightenment, and so they would um, shut this this hole and leave it for 333 days, and then they would actually remove the body. Um, and some of the so it was believed that so they have their physical body left behind in this world, but they have reached enlightenment, and so they they are a, a physical manifestation of Buddha. And you can actually see these bodies there in temples. Here, um, there's one just right near me, uh, where you can see two Sokushin Butsu uh, Buddha mummies, um, and also on on Mount Yudono, just right near where the, the Tori gates are. Oh, well, no, it's not actually. It's probably about uh, maybe 15 minute drive. But um, yeah, you can see these these Buddha Buddha mummies. Wow, that's really powerful. Yeah. And were yeah. they were they near death? Were they elderly or? Uh, so some of them, they're around. They're um, the ones that I know. They're about in their fifties or forties, which at that time was about the natural age to die as well. Um, and so I think it was when they turned fifty, they had to choose whether for fifty or forty-five, they had to choose whether to uh, continue the life as a, a monk um, in the in the temple or to um, I uh, could go and actually become a Sokushin Butsu, Buddha mummy. So that doesn't yeah. happen anymore, right? This is something so that... It was outlawed, yeah. Outlawed. Um, the last case was, I think it was around 1903 or 1904. So about 115 years ago. It, it looks like Master Hoshino is over 50. So it's it's nice <laughs> that he's he's still teaching and leading and, yeah. and taking people through the process. Yeah. He, he's... um. Yeah, so as I said, he can climb Mount Hagar in 30 minutes. Well, you know, um, but he's he's fit. He can climb Mount Gasan. He's really quick as well. And, uh, he's, and loads amazing. of pictures of him standing in the waterfall. That must be cold. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, waterfall meditation. So I've done it probably about 20, 20 or so times. Um, it's Master Hoshino is just like, it, it's extremely philosophical i don't know what you call it like he, he's just like you he's just like you just go in there and you become one with the waterfall like that's what he says he's like to do it well you have to become one with the waterfall and uh yeah it's easier said than done yeah um one of, yeah. One, of the, we, one of the stories that that i love to come across uh a japanese guy who was working in the city he was really busy with his job he came yeah. out and did the course and then yeah. he said for him what's the most meaningful part is that he's much happier in his life and when his yeah. kids yeah. see him they understand what it is to live and what their future yeah. might look like yeah 
Is that a common experience uh, for many yeah, people? It's a common theme. Yeah. Yeah, it's a common theme. Um, so my my business partner, Takaharu, it might, he might be the one that you saw actually. Because, um, yeah, he used to live uh, in Yokohama. He used to work in a, he worked in Japan's second biggest PR agency and he quit. He quit and he's like, I'm going to become Yamabushi. <laughs> and then he uh, set up the, the, the Yamabushi Do project. Yeah. Um, I think I think it was him that I often see in the pictures and video. Um, how yeah. about for you personally? Tell me about uh, your. So, yeah, for me, uh, so I've so my dad died four years ago, and that was that was huge um, for me. He was all of a sudden, um, and then also so my mum is terminally ill as well, and so. Um, I, I'm only 32. I don't know anyone else in their 30s who has who is in the same situation as me, uh, and so it's really tough. Um, so I have to deal with a lot of stuff, uh, and so. But being Yamabushi, like it, it has definitely helped because I can, with with the philosophy of Uketamo, I can continue like. Um, more for me is is um, it's like a reassurance, like um, that everything every, everything 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 is gonna be okay. Like um, uh, and then yeah, so I have to yeah. For me, the the philosophy has just um, it's been really helpful. Um, it's like you, if if you can learn to accept things, then it's much easier to move on, um, which is life, right? Like it's it's constantly changing, so you, you've constantly got to be able to adapt and move on. Um, and yeah, with the philosophy of Ketamo, I have been able to to do that. Um, so I feel content, I feel happy, um, even though there's some some things going on. But um, what can you do? <laughs> Yeah, that's well, that's wonderful that you've found a way to find some kind of connection back to nature yeah. or yeah. You know, through the Yamabushi philosophy. That's wonderful. That's right. Um, Kyle yeah. has commented from YouTube. Thank you, Kyle. He says, I love learning and both of you are taught me something today. Thank you. Thanks. Kyle. Oh, great. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. So in terms of uh, getting people from the city to come and experience this, one of your videos was you actually drove yeah. from Narita during COVID. Yes. You drove yes. eight hours from Narita all the That's way right. to the mountains. Yeah. So it is possible yeah. to drive there and experience. But uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> how much have yeah. you guys had to stop during coronavirus? Is it still possible oh. to experience anything um so we didn't do any training this year uh yeah it's been horrible <laughs> to say the least uh, i really want to get out there um so yeah we haven't been able to do any um but i think it would be possible because the training itself is um it's it can be socially distanced um because we are secluded right from yeah, even during the training, um, we could. It would be possible to keep a distance, um, but uh, yeah, we haven't been able to do any training. Um, even the official trainings have been cancelled, um, or they only do it, doing it with uh, officials from the shrine. Um, and yeah. this is really not the kind of thing you can do an online seminar. It's something you have to be there to experience, yeah. right? That's right. Um, I think some some aspects you would be able to learn online, but a lot of it you can't. You have to actually be out in nature. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be here, though. You can go out into wherever you are. Um, if you can go out into nature and just experience or feel, <laughs> you, it would be possible. Uh, it doesn't have to be here. Uh, Paul joined from YouTube. Thanks, Paul. This is a fascinating talk. It's something I would love to experience and learn more about. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul.
Yeah, you should uh, check out yamabushido.jp. So when do you think you can get back to doing walks or, or some, some kind of um, Yamabushi activities for visitors? Are you planning? Yeah, yeah, we're still planning. Um, so we, for, the, for the master's training, it's only three times a year. And then for the basic training, I think we have about 10 times in the year. Um, and they start, we, we are able to do it from May. And so, yeah, we're, we're organizing for that right now. Um, but for the, for the guided hike, we would be able to do it anytime. Um, anytime. But as of, like, right now, there's, uh, like, kind of, they don't want people to come from other prefectures at the moment. And so uh, it might be a bit difficult. But maybe maybe soon we'll be able to do it. Yeah, it'd be yeah. it'd be wonderful. I mean, nobody really knows right now. Things are are hopefully yeah. moving in that direction yeah. where things can open up yeah. more. Um, but yeah, moving from cities where they have more infection to the rural countryside, this is another yeah. problem um, for restarting tourism, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about ikigai? I think we we touched ikigai. on it. But ikigai is another key concept of yamabushi, right? Uh, it's I'm not sure if it's a yamabushi concept. It's a concept of it's my own concept, or uh, well, it's not. It's it's a Japanese concept, right? Ikigai. You mentioned uh, that I um, spent eight hours driving from Narita. Yeah, so I I did. Uh, that was because I went to New Zealand to to visit my mum, and then and about. Three weeks ago, I went to Mount Hagoro, and when I was going there, I, I, I became extremely emotional. I started crying. Just it felt like coming home, um, and so that that shows me how important the mountains are to to me. Uh, and so, yeah, that that connects to my ikigai. I feel so uh, mountains are like a, a an extremely important part of uh, my existence I, I guess you would say yeah yeah a lot of people they want that they want to get back like they they get stuck in in the cities or uh in in modern life and they want to just i don't know feel free i guess out in nature and and one way they can do that is is doing yamabushi training yeah or visiting just visiting the deva sansan as well it's quite a good good way yeah that's great. And you're doing such a service for the area uh, with all the work you do. So you're you're helping kind of as a consultant or destination branding for a lot of different groups. Yeah. Um, not only the Yamabushi, but you're you're also active with other groups as well, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, the, the, the main thing I'm doing is the Monzen Machi project, which is not just Yamabushi, it's um, the, the area surrounding Mount Hagoro. Uh, and so uh, the part of that project, uh, the, the cutting of the trees that I mentioned earlier, that's part of, of that project. Um, and we're also trying to develop, make it make it more friendly or make it more uh, for, for international visitors, uh, make it easier for people to come and experience what, what life is like. Um, and hopefully uh, come and, and learn lessons that, that people can take take back. Yeah, or maybe stay, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so, it's so valuable if you can apply that to your life. In terms of yes. the, the actual product, the actual services and making yep. it sustainable, uh, tell, me, tell me about some of the things like reducing waste or reusing yes. things, yep. what, what things are in practice there? Yeah, so we we've we're 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 trying to do that a lot better uh, sustainability uh, qualification that we're currently um, trying to to get, uh, and so but this is difficult, especially in Japan because there's a lot of plastic, and so we're try we're thinking of ways to stop using plastic, um, which is not easy because a lot of our partners, it's just the way that, that things are run and so it's, we have to try and convince them not to um, and also with things like kerosene kerosene heaters because it's, it's the norm here 
Uh, and so we have to, uh, and the, the, all, all the buildings are like more than a hundred years old, so they're cold. And so uh, I think, I'm not sure how we're going to get around that. We're going to maybe have to build new buildings sustainably at that as well. Do you encourage people to have reusable drink bottles, for example, and fill up yes, yes. with water along the way? That's right. Yeah. Reusable. So we used to. Uh, and one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. So one of the we used to uh, order plastic. Uh, we didn't. We didn't order plastic. Sorry. We used to order onigiri for the train, um, and it would come in plastic containers. And we stopped using that company. and went to a different company that provided uh, the. Same onigiri, but using bamboo leaves to wrap it. So, yeah. Kyle also mentions pack out what you pack in. So make sure that no garbage is left on the trail. Yes. Is, of course, very Leave important. only footprints. Take only photos. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's easier if, for example, your onigiri is wrapped in a leaf or bamboo. That's right. Instead of plastic yeah. that can blow away, even if you don't want to, right? Right. Um, yeah. we, we do beach cleanups and river cleanups and you find all kinds of plastic that people don't intend to leave in nature. So if you just don't right. take it in, that's a big step in the right yes. direction, right? That's right. Yeah. Same thing with, uh, yeah, water, water bottles as well. Um, if you have your own bottle, your chances are you're not going to leave it. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it <laughs> safe enough to drink water from the streams along the way or? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, we stop, and there are, there are secret uh, fountains that we know. <laughs> yeah, it's fresh. It's straight out of the mountain, so it's mainly snow, melted snow. So yeah. Beautiful. And then when you're doing the walks, what kind of food do you take? Is it just rice balls, like you said, or rice balls and pickles, like traditional yep. hiking food? Rice balls and pickles. Um, that's about it, actually. Like, do you have family? Ah, oh, children. Yeah, so we, yeah, every once in a while we have children uh, come. They, they love it. They can just, um, I don't know, be, be free and run around um, on the mountain. Uh, and, yeah, part of the what we do is trying to get people to understand. Um, and children, they take to it quite quite well. Um, I think it's probably because, because they're children. Um, so they're naturally curious. And so um, it's quite, quite, uh, it's fun having kids um, out in the mountains because they always have different insights as well that we share. Yeah. That's great. You have to leave your body to the mountain without complaining. So no bathing. Yeah. yeah. Don't even wash your face. No speaking. Yeah. Is that just yes. for the master course or is that for every, <laughs> every uh, course? It's just for, it's for the Yamabushi training. So it's for the masters and the basic training. Yeah. And he, he says you have to go back to a time when you were a beast. Uh, yeah, that, that's, um, that's one of the 10 realms, actually, the beast realm. Yeah. Wow. The, the reason why we don't shave, you're not allowed to shave or uh, you're not allowed to brush your teeth um, or wash your body. That's, that's because it's to go back to the time when humans didn't weren't able to do that or when we were actually beasts. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's one of the realms. I'm sure in many ways you learn to embrace that and enjoy it. And then it's hard to go oh, back yeah, yeah. to hygiene, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you yeah, you do get used to it. Um, especially <laughs> during the week long training it's 150, 160 men. <laughs> so the the stink gets pretty bad. But uh, if you're in it, it's fine. But if you're not, it's it's, it's hard to to be <laughs> hard to deal with. Yeah, it's kind of like eating garlic, right? As long as everybody eats it, it's okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Wow, that's really wild. Like. Um, so if people come even for two days, they can take part, right? A one night, two day course. That's right. That's correct. Yeah. But so it's. Early morning, late evening um, kind of thing, yeah. And then there's a four-day, three-night course, which is the, the yep, higher level the course, right? Yeah. And you, yeah. you expect that this might come back from next spring or next summer? Yes, yeah. So from May, we, we should, we'll, we'll be running it, yeah. 
And then in the videos I see when like you visit temples or shrines along the way and there's chanting, um, is yep. chanting something that the participants also learn? Okay. Yeah, so originally, originally everything was passed down from the generation above you. So you would just listen and copy. So that's how it's passed down through the generations. But we, we kind of cheat. We give people a little um, sheet of paper with the, the chants on them. And so they can join in. Uh, and yeah, um, the chants, we have the three different ones. One is, um, or four actually, one is Hagoro Shugendo, one is uh, Shinto, one is Buddhist. And then the other one is, uh, oh, the, two of them are Buddhist, the last two. Uh, one is one, one is the Heart Sutra, which is in every every single Buddhist temple. Something that uh, Master Hoshino has said a few times is there's too much focus in the modern world for people about money. But in terms of having a sustainable product, you have to ask for some money for this. This. Yeah. Um, so uh, can you give us a price range? Like how much would it cost for a two day versus a four day per person? Okay. Uh, so for the two day experience, it's about 850 US dollars, uh, 85,000. Yeah, we, we generally have a fo phone interview or um, video chat um, to make sure that the, well, to make sure that we're both on the same, same level. Uh, and then um, f for payment, uh, it's, it's, uh, Normal, a normal credit card or PayPal. Is it per person? Uh, so we can do it from one person. Okay. The deposit and then, yeah, we require the full payment before six days before the event starts. Yeah. Do you give people advice about uh, trying to get in shape before they come or uh, try to think about certain things before they come? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we tell them not to think about it, actually. <laughs> the opposite um and so uh yeah because if you if you think about it you're you come in with expectations so we don't want people to come in with the expectations and that those because those expectations affect your experience practical advice um my advice is always to uh do hip opening exercises so that when you sit on the floor it's not too too difficult um which is quite it's it's a, there's a lot of sitting on the floor. And are the are the programs open all year? You said in winter you don't really do much. Is that right? Yeah. So for the basic and the masters training, we run the masters is eight in each of July, August, and September once each, and then the basic is from May until October. Um, but the guided hike we can do year round. That's great. And you, you're you also joining the different programs? Me? Oh, yes. You know, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, uh, so you have the, you have a lead Yamabushi guide and I'm the assistant. And so, yeah, the, the guide um, only speaks Japanese. And so I translate during the training. How, but yeah. you're not supposed to speak. So there's not too much translation, right? <laughs> That's right. So it's mainly just commands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kyle says, I may have missed this, but how do you sleep on the mountain? Is it tents, sleeping bags, or on the ground? Um, so we sleep in. Uh, I, my my the the answer I want to give you, I can't. Um, we sleep. Yeah, it's a secret, but uh, we sleep in the in the lodges in the pilgrim lodge. Yeah. So in terms of comfort level, I think this is something people would worry about, right? Like walking in Tabi, yeah. uh, doing so yeah. much hiking, not being able to bathe. Um, in terms of complaints after, do people adjust uh -huh. to it? And they're able to accept it? Oh, no, they adjust. They're yeah, okay. they adjust, yeah. <laughs> Mostly people, well, they, they have an idea of what they're getting into they're, and they want to uh, experience it properly. So. They come to us, yeah. And in terms of big life changes and taking on the philosophy of acceptance and having a more meaningful yeah. life, do you find that people after the course, are they able to apply it a little bit to their lives? 
um yeah people know they, they definitely apply it uh the the teachings that they learn um th there are a few uh, we're about to set up a new website with a reviews page which has uh actual experiences of um participants and they yeah definitely able to um, apply the philosophy to their life because um, yeah some people are going through some pretty tough tough things but with the help of the Yamabushi do the Yamabushi philosophy um, they are able to to continue uh, and live healthy happy lives yeah that's so good I think that's so important to be able to take some of the key teachings and apply that's, it to your day-to-day -to -day. yeah that's what the, the whole thing is based on is giving this opportunity to learn about Yamabushi philosophy that people can use do you find yeah. repeaters sure. people come back yes yes um we've had a few um we've had some even come and become official yamabushis as well yeah so if someone wanted to become yamabushi what time type of time commitment would they need um so there's so they would they would have to come and do a yamabushi training um through Yamabu uh sorry through dewa shrine um, but that's by invites only, so they'd have to have some sort of connection to the Yamabushi. Um, the the training takes a week. Ah, so for for men it takes a week. For for women it's a four day training. Um, yeah, uh, it's always every single year. It's always uh, on August the twenty sixth for a week. So if, if you can commit to about ten days, you, you'd be able to do it. And what is the price? Can you tell us a general price for that? Uh, so that one, because it's run, it's been run for more than 150 years, and it's got 160 participants. That's uh, five fifty thousand yen. Seven days. Seven oh, days. Seven days. But you would need to do a shorter course and be somehow connected to the uh, to get, yeah to get an introduction beforehand. yeah. Yeah, if people have questions or uh, want to yeah. learn just, more about or, it. Yeah, just search Kiwi Yamabushi. That's me. New Zealand Yamabushi. Kiwi Yamabushi. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing there, Tim. And uh, introducing this philosophy that's so important in this day and age as we're so busy and uh, overwhelmed yeah. by our, our lives and need to reconnect yeah. back to nature and a, yes. a deeper yeah. philosophy for meaning of life. So yeah. I, I really appreciate all you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining.